So it's finally time for me to cover the brand new card and the brand new boss monster I was most excited to cover from the brand new selection pack. Even if I was unable to pull it from that selection pack. Where's my Zelantis? Yeah, that's that's a f definitely a funny way of spelling Zelantis. Is this the Zelantis? Is this him? Or is it another Notoria monster? Some goatee stuff. Seven Notoria Mole Crickets. Awesome. Just, just what I want. Eight Notoria Mole Crickets. Look at this. What, what is this? Yeah. Anyways, so the reason I was looking forward to this card's release so much is because I get to play it in one of my favourite decks in the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh! A deck that has some really crazy unique interactions with this card that almost make it look like you're cheating. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I get into the deck list, if you guys are enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, so apparently about 35% of people watching this video are even subscribed to the channel, meaning 65% of you haven't even clicked that button yet. So if you guys are enjoying this content and want to see more videos just like this in the future, then leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. Alright, let's get into this deck list. So what is new in Marine Cess? Well Marine Cess just got itself a fantastic boss monster in World Sea Dragon Zelantis, which is a brilliant card for this decklist because it gives Marine Cess an actual board nuke, which is something this decklist was really really lacking in. Because this decklist, unlike most Link decks, can't really run access code talker because if it does, you're generally locking yourself out of water because of your an enemy, or locking yourself only into water because of an enemy, so you're not able to go into access all that often. You can't run things like Zeus because again, you're generally locked into water, so it's a bit rough to try to run Zeus. And there's a lot of other sort of board nuking cards in the game that just don't really fit in this deck list. There's no like synchros you can run. So in general, this deck list was only really relying on its removal from your Aqua Argonaut, which is a very, very weak source of removal, being just a one-for-one -one trade, so that was something this decklist was lacking. But now we have World Sea Dragon Zelantis. This card is amazing in particular for this decklist. So basically, this card takes one plus effect monster to summon. That means it's a Link 4 that takes only one effect monster, so either of your two boss monsters, whether that be your Argonauts, or your great or your, your um, Bubble Reef, can be turned into it immediately, just from having you having them on the field, slam your dude on top of it, and it just swap, takes its place essentially. You can also obviously summon it still by just having a Link 3 and a Link 1, or two Link 2s, all like standard sort of stuff, but it's also summonable, like I said, just by slamming the top one of your boss monsters. Alright, you can only control one World Sea Dragon Zelantis. You can use each of the following effects once per turn. During your main phase, you can banish all monsters on the field, then special summon as many of those monsters, of many possible that were banished by this effect to their owner's fields, face up or on face down defense position. So normally what this card will do, is it'll banish everything on the field, and then it'll summon back everything it just banished to the field. Now, in particular for Marine Cess, or this deck in particular, this won't actually happen. You're going to be locking yourself into water, and because you're the one summoning the monsters back, the only things that are going to come back is your monsters, unless of course your opponent was playing water monsters. So you'll see this during the gameplay examples, basically this decklist, it nukes the entire field, brings back everything, but only brings back the water monsters, so anything your opponent had that wasn't water, gets completely banished. So a fantastic board nuke that banishes the entire field. Alright, during the battle phase as a quick effect, you destroy cards on the field up to the number of co-linked monsters on the field. So this card, plus a copy of your Marine Cess Anemone, or whatever you have co-linked to it, will just allow you to destroy a whole bunch of different cards on the field, normally up to like 2 or 3, something like that. So on top of being able to nuke the entire field worth of monsters, you also have a nice way to deal with your opponent's back row as well, if it's unactivatable. As for the rest of the deck, let's just your stock standard Marine Cess stuff. I don't want to go through it here, as I've already done multiple Marine Cess videos before. And if you're interested in learning more about how the Marine Cess archetype works, or the combos, I'll leave a link at the top of the description to a bit of a combo guide that showcases how this deck list works and all the combos in it. But basically for this one, there's not much point me going through all the Marine Cess cards in here, as I've already done it multiple times before. Obviously, obviously this particular deck list is teched more towards tier. I'm running triple evenly matched, I'm running triple DD Crow. I feel like you have to sort of run a lot of anti-tier tech right now, as this deck list 
it's not the greatest first tier, it's still a fairly decent deck list, and certainly in the next format it has a couple of tournament toppings IRL, so this deck list does get a bit better over time, but currently tier format just kind of dominating everything, so it's not the greatest right now, but it's still a decent deck list, it is still a tournament winning sort of a deck list, so without further ado, let's get into some actual gameplay. Alright, so before we jump into the gameplay, I thought I'd show you guys beforehand just a little bit of a rough example of what this new boss monster does for Marine Cess, just against the dual practice partner. So for this example, I've set up a very stock standard Marine Cess end board. I won't be showing you any of the combos for how Marine Cess works in this particular video, because I've already done a video showcasing off the combos for this deck list. And if you want to learn those combos, feel free to check them out. I'll leave a link at the top of the description to that video, because I feel like there's no real point to be showing you the combo tutorial once again when I've already done it. And 99% of people who've clicked this video I'm pretty sure just already own Marine Cess and just want to know what the new boss monster is going to be doing for your deck list. So that's what this video is going to be about. But like I said, if you want to check out the combos and learn how this deck list functions, I'll leave a link to the top of the description. Which I'll leave a link at the top of the description, which will showcase this deck list and all the combos for it anyway. Alright, so for this particular end board, I've just set up a very stock standard Marine Cess end field with your Link 4 monster on, my, on the field. Alright, so now we have the Link 4 on the field, my opponent has a monster, just pretend this is a bunch of big scary monsters on the field, so I need to get rid of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon out your Zalantis, using just your singular Link 4 on the field. Alright, summoning it straight to the field. Now this will actually trigger your Marine Cess Coral and Enemy. If you haven't already used it for your negate and it's still one of your equip spells, you can then use this effect to give yourself an add back from the graveyard, in this case grabbing this dude. Alright, from here I'm now going to summon my Seahorse. This is going to look very suboptimal, but I just wanted to show it off real quick. I'm going to bring out our Coral and Enemy. Slamming that on the field. And now we're going to use our Enemy's effect to bring back another Water Monster, bringing back our little Marine Cess over here. Alright, now from here we're actually going to banish the entire field. So this card, normally what it will do is it banish every single monster on the field, then it will bring back every single one of those monsters. Basically resetting once per turn effects, removing any sort of um, Xyz materials, uh, removing any equip spells, basically all that kind of stuff. But in this specific case for Marine Cess, we've actually locked ourselves into only special summoning water monsters for the rest of the turn, thanks to using your Marine Cess Coral and Enemies effect. Meaning, as soon as we use this effect, banishing absolutely everything on the field, You'll notice, my opponent's, my opponent's monster isn't being resummoned like it normally would with this card's effect. So it's going to bring back our fish over here, our big Zalantis. Summoning back our enemy. And summoning back our other Marine Cess over here. Alright, and the final interaction with this deck is, have I got a left arrow I can summon here? Not easily. Either way, this card can then, during the battle phase, actually destroy as many cards on the field as co-linked monsters are on here. So for example, these two are co-linked, so I can now use this effect, and just pop one of these cards on the field. I did two cards actually, sorry, it was two cards that were linked, because yeah, two co-linked monsters. So that's basically all the interactions for this deck list. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Let's get into some actual gameplay now. Alright, so today I'm only going to be showing you one replay, simply because, well, like I said earlier, this is going to be more of a niche sort of combo, where it's going to be something you're going to be doing some jewels, but not every jewel. So even though I've played like seven or eight games of Marine Cess, I only actually summoned the boss monster once, because it only had like one case where I really wanted to summon it. It's a really good combo and needs to be run in Marine Cess for when it comes up, but it's one of those niche examples where... You're not going to be doing it every game, in fact most of your games, if not nearly all of them, you won't be summoning it all that often. It's just needed for when you need the board clear, otherwise you won't be summoning it all that often. So I'm only going to be showing you one example, you only really need one because it's going to be showing you the exact same thing every single time. So yeah, I thought I'd just show you one, and it's against a Tealement gameplay, so pretty decent gameplay at that. Alright, so let's start off with a very stock standard looking sort of Marine Cess line, using my one extender so that I can end on the Link 4 and search for the trap card. So going into our blue slug, blue slug, gonna add a card back from graveyard. All right, of course, adding back the our spring girl. Special summon to the link arrow. Make a coral enemy. Special summon back from graveyard. Our opponent has a tier limit here. We do have call by the grave, so if he does hit something or tr tries to go for a fusion summon, we're not completely doomed. That's our opponent actually had a uh, sacred protector, which is a bit a bit annoying for this deck list. Not the worst though, but it's a little bit annoying. 
Because it now means when we try to go for a add back from an R and enemy, our opponent can now shuffle to stop us doing that. It's not the worst though. I could have tried like call by the grave beforehand, but it doesn't really matter all that much. It just means our opponent's going to make it so that it's a little bit more awkward to attach link monsters using our field spell at the end of the turn. So. And we already have water monster in hand to discard with this thing anyway, so it's not like we need this um, add back to hand. Better just save the call by for when my opponent tries to do tier summoning during his turn. Alright. Signing back the Spring Girl. Going for our Link 4, of course, and attaching all the materials. Alright. Setting one and passing. Thankfully, we have a Max C, though, and we know how good Max C is. Alright. Instantly activating that Max C so we can draw some cards. And see how much our opponent wants to play the, uh, play the Max C game. Alright, getting a couple of nice hits here. I do have a Call by the Grave ready though still, so... If our opponent ever tries to do any fusion summoning, we're ready to go. Alright, gonna negate that. I could have actually called by the grave using his other one in the grave, but I thought I'd wait still. Then our opponent is actually running. Now, I haven't seen- I actually haven't seen a tier player on this card yet, so I was very surprised when this thing came out. I was like, oh, Evil Swarm Extinction. I'm pretty sure this is actually the first time in Master Duel specifically I've seen someone using this card. So I was like, oh, really? Okay, I guess, I guess I'm getting uh, destroyed. And he nukes my entire field. Still fine though, because our boss monster does survive, thanks to our uh, negate spell, of course. Thanks to our hand trap, and because we lost our enemy, we can now add back our hand trap once again. And our hand trap actually isn't a once per turn, so we can still reuse this. So our opponent does try to go for a kick close, we can negate the kick close. And our opponent, I think, knows that, because instead of fusion summoning into one, he just goes straight for the big boy instead. Which is pretty, like, silly anyway, because it doesn't really do anything, because it's like, this thing's just gonna, this thing's already immune to it, so. Not really sure what the point that was. I think he probably should have just gone for a kit. Anyway, battle phase beats over my guy. Then makes a Zeus as well. Alright, now we already we already saw him search for the counter trap earlier, so we just want to get rid of this counter trap and then we're good to go. Oh god, the amount of cards in hand. Maxi is a broken card. Alright, that's been evenly matched. He's gonna use his counter trap, that's completely fine, because now we have an imperm ready for his Zeus. And you'll notice, now I've already used my battle phase. Of course, DD Crow ready for that one. Alright. So I've actually already used my battle phase, which is another really important reason why Xylantis is so goddamn good in this particular deck, or in decks that like to use things like Evenly Matched, because now that I've used Evenly Matched, I can't go to battle phase, so removing my opponent's stuff in Marine sets can be really goddamn difficult, especially considering this deck list doesn't even have that much innate removal. Your boss monster does have the, of course, the option to return one water monster, return one of your opponent's monsters to hand, but it's not exactly the greatest, it's only one for one removal. So Zelantis does mean I can now board wipe this entire field, which is only two monsters, but they're still pretty scary monsters. Alright, so we're negate Zeus first, of course, so he doesn't be uh doesn't stop me doing my thing. Some my slug. Slug gonna be adding back. Also, by the way, if you're wondering why I didn't summon out my um or use my Link 3 in the graveyard's effect, it's because I didn't actually have a Link 1 in here, because my opponent uh, got rid of it a bit earlier, so got rid of them earlier, shuffled them back into the deck. So I can't actually use that as effect, that card's effect. Alright, so we're just going to go for our Marine Sets and Enemy as soon as possible. I right, fast a little bit here. Searching for our Special Summon back from Graveyard. Going to a copy of our Enemy. Enemy bringing back. Bringing out Link 3. Marine Sets died because it's a, level, a Link 1. Or our level 1, ready to go into a um, Solantis. Banishing the entire field, and because we locked ourselves into the Water monsters only. The only things that come back are my monsters, giving me my big ass boss monster, my coral enemy, and my opponent just lost everything, including his monster that would have resummoned itself, because of normally the same when it goes to the graveyard, obviously resummons itself to send tier cards to the graveyard and other annoying things, but instead it's just banished and gone, don't have to worry about it anymore. And passing the turn. Alright, I think my opponent just concedes here. Oh no, he no, tries to do one summon first. I'm just going to negate that with the anemone. Oh, sorry, with the wave. 
And that's basically it for his turn. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.